Let's lift our hands to our King this evening. Jesus, we thank you for your presence here that's among us. We thank you that your healing power is here to restore us, to forgive us, to take us to different levels. We thank you, Jesus, for your saving grace that is here, your power and your mercy and your deliverance is here. We thank you, Jesus, that you are here right among us, God. And we give you all the praise and all the glory in the wonderful master's name of Jesus. Somebody say amen. 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 Well, we're glad you're here. Give your neighbor a high five. Tell us it's so good to see you. Give it up for our online community. Those who are watching online, we welcome you to the Wayworld Outreach Wednesday night service. My name is Pastor Joe. I'm the campus pastor of our Arrowhead campus. I have the privilege and the honor of beginning a new series tonight. We're going to be focusing for the next several weeks on building healthy families. How many want a healthy family? I think we all want a healthy family. So we're going to be speaking uh, the word of God and uh, helping families get healthy. How many here have a family that is a little unhealthy? You could, you could use some work. Praise the Lord. Thank you for your honesty. And so we're going to get into this. I'm going to give you two keys tonight. Well, maybe probably just one tonight. I'll do, I'll do another one another night. But I want to tell, I want to start with this key here. Healthy families are, are, they're not born. Okay, they're not born. Healthy families are actually built. You have to build a healthy family. You're not born uh, into a healthy family. Most people are not given a healthy family. Most people have to actually build a healthy family. For me and my wife, when we got married, we were completely unhealthy. Our relationship was completely chaotic. Cops were always at our house, were always fighting. She was always leaving me, and I'd be on the couch for days and weeks on end. Completely unhealthy. You could be unhealthy and still be a Christian. Just because you're saved, it doesn't make you healthy. You actually have to work and build your relationships Build your families to become healthy because uh, you're just not given. It's not just given to you. So most people have to build a healthy family. Say, I'm, I'm willing to build it. A majority of people are not born into a healthy family. Even if you were born into a healthy family, it doesn't negate the fact that someone took the time to make it healthy. Maybe it wasn't you, maybe it was your dad or your grandfather or grandmother, but somebody had to invest the time to make the family healthy. Amen? Amen? One major problem that most families face today is that everyone wants a healthy family, but no one wants to build a healthy family. We all want it, but no one wants to build it. Just like everyone wants a clean house, but no one wants to clean the house. Everyone wants a car that works, but no one wants to work on the car. Everyone wants a healthy family, but no one wants to build it. Your family is a reflection of your build. So if you complain about your family, you're really making yourself look bad. If you complain about your wife, about your husband, about your children, they are simply a reflection of your carpentry. They are who you build them to be. The man that you see here on stage is, is uh, I'm here because of all my wife's work she put into me. A lot of investment. And the, sa and the same in reverse. Like She wasn't always that cute. She was crazy, too. Don't let her fool you. She got pulled over by the cops, too. I'll let her tell you. I'll let her tell you that story. I won't. But if you want a healthy wife, then you got to be prepared to build her. You got to invest the time and effort to build her. If you want healthy children, 
then you're going to have to be prepared to build your children. No one's going to build them for you. You must build them yourself. It's not the pastor's job. It's not kids' world's job. It's not the youth program's job. It is your job to build your family. Amen? Amen. But before you can build your family, you got to do one thing, and that's to build a healthy you. You cannot build anyone until you first build yourself. Tell your neighbor, build yourself. You cannot make demands on your family to be healthy while you're completely unhealthy. You cannot blame your family for your unhealthiness. You can't make excuses for why you're unhealthy. I'm talking spiritually unhealthy. You can't blame anyone for that. I am required and you are required to build myself to be healthy even if my family does not. I have to build myself. The Bible says in Jude 20, he says, but you, beloved, build yourselves up. Who are you going to build up? Yourself. You got to build yourself. If you're going to build others, you got to first what? Build yourself. If you're going to overflow into others, you, you have to fill your own cup first. And then you can overflow and pour into others. But you can't put expectations on people that you're not willing or doing for yourself. You have to build yourself up first. Praise the Lord. Build yourself up. Tell your neighbor, build yourself up. And then he says this. He's going to give you a tool here. Build yourself up in your most holy faith by praying in the Holy Ghost. Praying in the Holy Ghost is a tool to build yourself up. It creates a muscle, a spiritual muscle inside of you. That's why you should desire uh, the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Because praying in the Spirit is going to develop and build you up. It's one, of, it's one of the main tools in the Bible that, that teaches how to build yourself up, how to access more faith, how to grow yourself by praying in the Holy Spirit or praying in tongues. Just by a show of hands, how many people pray in the Spirit here? Praise the Lord. You should be the buffest people in the church. It is a great, great tool. Would you all agree? If you're going to build a healthy family, then you need to understand and identify and know your tools. A good builder knows their tools. There are tools for building and there are tools uh, for destroying. Both types of tools are equally important. And you'll need to build things around your family to make them healthy. And you'll need to destroy things to keep them healthy. So there will be things that you need to build, but there will be also things that you need to destroy. And you need different tools for both of those things. We saw here on stage a lot of people using a big beater to destroy things. I love that tool. That's my favorite go-to tool in my toolbox. When something isn't working or fixing something, give me the beater. Give me the beater. I'll make that, I'll make that thing submit. But you're going to need both tools. One thing you're going to need to do is you're going to need to destroy everything that represents an idol in your life. You cannot have any idols in your life. 
If you want your family to be healthy, be prepared to destroy every single idol. Let me show you what I'm talking about. Key number two, idols destroy families. What destroys families? Idols destroy families. What's an idol? An idol is an act of worship, devotion, dedication, dependence, commitment, and satisfaction to something other than God. Idolatry begins in the heart. It is craving, wanting, enjoying, being satisfied by, treasuring something other than or more than God. The first commandment prohibits idolatry, stating, you shall have no other gods before me. That is the very first thing that God said. You cannot have any other gods before your God. Anything that gets in the way of him being first is an idol. Anything can be an idol. A car can be an idol. Some of you spend more time washing and waxing your car than you do reading your Bible. Hello. A house can be an idol. You can worship your house. A career can be an idol. Money can be an idol. Sports can be an idol. Some of us maybe miss church to watch the Laker game. What happened to them Lakers? Uh, never mind. I won't talk about it. How did you feel missing church and watching? Never mind. I, we said we weren't going to talk about it. Sports can be an idol. Religion can be an idol. The world can be an idol. Your family can be an idol. I've heard people say, Pastor Joe, I need to spend more time with my family. I'm not, we were, we're not going to, we're taking a, a break from church for a while. What that basically means is uh, they're going to Disneyland. They're not going to church. They're, they're going to Disneyland. And 100% of the time, something always goes wrong. And I have to explain the, 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 order, the order of operations. And the order of operations is God first and Mickey Mouse is way down here. God is first. You don't miss church. You don't miss uh, serving God, doing, doing, your, doing, uh, uh, doing ministry for God to, to take your family to Disneyland. You, you go to church, and, and then after church, then you go to Disneyland. Then you go to the beach. You have to get the order right. If you mess the order up, then you're going to mess your family up. Your family's going to experience resistance and trouble, and it's going to get difficult because God must be what? First. In Joshua 6, 17, Joshua, the leader over God's people, instructs his army to destroy every idol that they conquer. In Joshua chapter 6, verse 17, the Bible says, the city, Jericho, and everything is to be destroyed as an offering to the Lord. You're going to destroy everything as what? An offering to the Lord. Joshua 6.18 says this, remember, we must destroy what? Everything. There can't be nothing. There can't be anything. Everything means what? Everything. Destroy everything. Don't take anything. If you take anything and bring it into your camp, you yourselves will be destroyed and you will cause trouble for the rest of your people or for the rest of your family. But the Israelites, in verse 1, chapter 7, the Israelites did not obey God. There was a man from the tribe of Judah named Achan who kept some of the things that should have been destroyed. He, he, what did he do? He kept things that should have been what? Destroyed. 
So the Lord, watch this, became furious. Now, that's a scary word. I don't ever want to make the Lord furious. And it's important that in order for me not to uh, make the Lord that upset, that I have to obey what he asked me to do. And if there's something in my life that he's not happy with, he's not pleased with, or something that's getting in the way of him, that's taking me away from reading the word or praying or doing ministry or helping people, that thing needs to get out of my life. It needs to be destroyed, and I need to get the order right. Otherwise, God, it, it, we're going to have a talk. He's going to have a talk with me. You ever had those talks with the Lord? Straighten it up. You got to get it right. So Joshua said to, to the men, or the Lord said to Joshua, I'm sorry, in verse 11. Is, he said, they've not only stolen them, but they've lied about it. And, and they actually hid the things among their own belongings. Verse 12 says, that is why the Israelites are running from their enemies in defeat. For now, Israel itself has been set apart for destruction. This is what God says. I will not remain with you any longer unless you destroy the things among you that were set apart for destruction. Verse 13. You will never, watch this, you will never defeat your enemies until you remove the things from among you. If you hold on to what God has determined to be destroyed, you'll never defeat your enemies. Even the smallest of enemies will rule over you. The army of Ai was small. They had only 2,000 soldiers as opposed to Jericho, whom they just conquered, who had 40,000 soldiers. The size of the army was much smaller. The size of the army was not their problem. Their family was certainly not their problem. The idols that they were holding on to that they should have destroyed, that was their problem. And the very things that we put before God, his word says those things will destroy you. Those things will consume you. Joshua 7, 20 says this. Achan replied, it is true. I have sinned against the Lord, the God of Israel. Among the plunder, I saw a beautiful robe from Babylon, 200 silver coins and a bar of gold weighing more than a pound. I wanted them so much that I took them and they're hidden in the ground beneath my tent with the silver buried deeper than the rest. And so he buried what he should have burned. He hid what he should have destroyed. How many know you can't hide nothing from God? You might be able to hide it from your wife or hide it from your husband, but you can't hide it from God. And you see that there are, there are layers of, of the things that he hid. Some things he hurt, uh, hid at one level and other things at a different level. Some of you are good at hiding. Good at hiding stuff. I was very good at hiding stuff from my wife. I used to put things in, inside of things. Socks inside of socks, inside of socks, and, and a little something for myself in there. And, and, and the only person that it was destroying was me. The, the, only, the only person that it was, that it was hurting was, it was my family. So thinking that I could hide and get away with it, it doesn't work. God, God will always find us out. God always knows. You can't hide nothing from God. He sees it all. And so if you're, you're here, I mean, we saw these people uh, destroying idols. If you're here, I, I would have to believe that there are some things in, in some of our lives that God is still completely unhappy with completely unhappy with. Some of you are in relationships that you shouldn't be in. 
You're dating someone that, that God has told you not to date. Some of you are hiding in those relationships, sneaking around places where you shouldn't be. And God sees it all. And the only person that's going to be hurt by it is going to be you and your family. And so it's time that we take a good inventory and begin to destroy everything in our life that's getting in the way of God and ultimately hurting our family. Amen? Verse 24 says, Then, then Joshua and all the Israelites took Achan, the silver, the robe, the bar of gold, the sons, daughters. Watch this. They took, took his who? His sons. See, his his sin is now what? Affecting his family. Took his, took his sons, not, not just Achan. He took his sons with him. His daughters are being taken now. The family's being, uh, being judged here. He took his cattle, his donkeys, his sheep, his goat, his tent, or his house, and everything that he had, and they brought them to the valley of Achor. Then Joshua said to, to Achan, why have you brought trouble on us? The Lord will now bring trouble on you. And all the Israelites, they stoned Achan, watch this, and his family and burned their bodies. Good Lord. And they piled a great heap of stones over Achan, which remains to this day. And that is why the place has been called the Valley of Trouble ever since. So the Lord was no longer angry. Praise the Lord for the God. This side of God is necessary for a guy like me. Maybe you do better with the loving, the, the affectionate, the merciful. The, I love that side too, and I need that too. But I also need this. I need to know what I'm doing is wrong and that there's a penalty for it. There's a judgment for it. There's a reckoning for it. I need to know that. I need to know that God is unhappy with me. I need to know that, that God, is a, God will judge me if I don't correct these behaviors. I need to know that, that I'll get in trouble if I continue to do these things. I need to know that. Otherwise, I'll think that I've escaped judgment or I can somehow trick God or deceive my family, and you can't do that. We can't, we can't uh, fool ourselves into thinking that uh, there won't be trouble because there will be trouble. And some of us are in trouble right now. Some of our families are messed because of idolatry. And there's trouble in the house. There's trouble in the marriage. There's trouble with the children uh, because of the things in your life that are getting in the way of God. It's not your wife that's the problem. It's not your children the problem. The problem is with you. You have an idol. You have something you love more than God. You have something that you worship more than Jesus Christ. You have something you do, something you watch that is distasteful and just ugly in the sight of God. Something he wants you to destroy. And you need to be able to put your finger on that thing and destroy that thing. Otherwise, trouble is coming. And unhealthiness will be there. And, and I don't want any unhealthiness in my, in my life. I want to be healthy in the things of God. I want a healthy family. I want a healthy relationships. I want, I want a healthy ministry. I want everything to be healthy, so I need to correct, correct all these misbehaviors in my life. I need to walk circumspectly. I need to watch what I'm doing all the time. I need to watch what I'm thinking, what I'm watching, what I'm devoting my time to, what I'm devoting my, my, my worship to. I need to be careful of those things. 
Because I'm here to serve God. I'm here to live for Jesus. I'm not here to live for me. I'm not here to get rich. I'm not here to be noticed. I'm not here to be on TV. I am here to worship the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. The one who saved me. The one who redeemed me. The one who gave his life for me. I am here because Jesus saved me. And I have to keep the order right. Otherwise, trouble will come. I've seen trouble. I've seen it my whole life. I was born in trouble. Born in sin. My family was, was, was a mess. I didn't know who my dad was. When I found, I found out how, I still, still very confused. If I told you today, you'd be scratching your hair. Huh? Who's... Who married who? Who did what? Praise the Lord. I didn't hear what she said, but praise God. <laughs> On Saturday, my dad died. And it was super difficult because we had been through so much. We both uh, met each other, came into this world lost souls. He didn't have the greatest of upbringing, and so he didn't know how to bring me up. And so there was complete dysfunction in my family. But all that got healed the day that we met Jesus. The day that we met Jesus, God healed our relationship, brought love into our relationship, restored our relationship, brought health and vitality into our relationship, brought the presence of God into our relationship. And I am so thankful for God to do that because my family was in trouble. And the sad thing would have been for him to pass and there's still trouble in the family. That's a terrible, terrible thing for us to not reconcile our, with our family, not make amends to our family, not, not allow God to heal your family. We have to set apart our differences. We have to understand that there's an enemy out there trying to destroy and, and, and kill your family. And you have to come together and work together to build a healthy house, a holy habitation for God. And it takes work, brothers and sisters. It takes a lot of work. It takes a lot of humility. It takes a lot of love. It takes a lot of studying, a lot of effort, a lot of praying. It takes all those things. But... When, when you get to the end of it all, like me, how long have we been married? 26 years? 26 years. Like, we're good right now. Like, you see a, a side of us that, that many people never saw. People didn't give us a year. They even said at our wedding, we'll give it a year. They'll be divorced in a year. That was the toast at our wedding. Well, look at what God did right here. Look at what the Lord did. The devil's a liar. The devil's a liar. And you need to decide. I want you to decide today. Go ahead and stand to your feet. But I want you to decide right now. Decide what your family is going to look like. Your immediate family and your extended family. You need to decide, especially the men, because you, you're, you're, you're like the main guy. You're, you're the builder in the house. And some of you are, are, are complaining about uh, your building. Well, you built it. And you need to decide that, uh, that your family is at your disposal. You can build them however you decide. You understand what I'm saying? You could build a beautiful, 
loving, nurturing, tender, honest wife. Or he can beat her down with words, hurt, spite. And she'll become whatever you build her to be. Your children are the same. You can call them stupid or they don't know nothing. or You can belittle them and they'll become that because that's what you build. The power is, the hammer is right in your hands. And you need to decide what your family is going to look like. Is your family going to be a healthy family? Or is it going to be a destructive family? You need to decide. All over this room, let's bow our head, close our eyes. Determine right now what your family is going to be. And if you're saying, Pastor Joe, I'm making a decision that me and my house, we're going to serve the Lord. Me and my house, we're going to be a healthy family. We're not going to allow anything in the house, in our lives, that take us away from God. We're going to destroy every idol in our house. And if that's you, you're making that decision, I want you to take just a, a stand right now and just come to the altar with your family. They're, they're there with you. Bring them to the altar. Say, honey, we're making a decision right now. We're making a bold confession right now. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. If you have anything in your life that you're holding on to, that's getting in the way of God, I want you to just come forward right now as a, as a, as a symbol that you're going to let those things go here tonight. Come on. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Bring all your family up. Oh, amazing. Look at this cute family right here. Awesome. Good job, sir. Awesome. A lot of healing coming your way. A lot of healing is going to take place. You hear me? It's coming. It's coming. Okay? Look at her right now. Look at her. Amen. Awesome. Praise the Lord. Good job. Good job. Great decision. Proud of you. Amen. Come on. Let's pull up. Let's come forward. Come on. Bring your honey up. Bring your family up. Yeah, we need some altar workers up here too. Thank you, Jesus. Are you guys ready? understand there's a lot of power in your words like you have a you have a great radiance like just bring that into your house into your family they're gonna love you for it you have the power to build you have the power to destroy some things in your life you're gonna need to destroy you know what those things are there's a tool for that Destroy those things. Let them go. You need to build other things. Get plugged into this church. Do everything. Do all the classes. Do it ten times. Who cares? Amen? Good job. Proud of you. All right, stretch your hands out. All these folks up here, stretch out your hands to them. Watch this. Let's pray together. Say, Jesus, I choose to destroy everything in my life that doesn't give you glory. Every idol, every form of worship, dedication, commitment, substitution, I throw it away. Right now, you're first. I serve you first. Me and my family, we will serve the Lord and no one else. 
I commit my life to you, God, and no one else. I am set apart for Jesus Christ to do his will and to love my family, to make them healthy, to make them holy as you are holy. Help me, Jesus. Teach me to be a master builder. I surrender to you right now. In Jesus' name, amen, amen, amen. Give God praise and glory. Hallelujah. All right, we got prayer. Everyone needs prayer. Just stay up here at the altar. We got altar workers here that will help you out. Pastor Christian, do you have any final words? Can we give Pastor Joe, can we give Pastor Joe a hand if you receive tonight? It starts with you. We're building healthy families. It starts with you. Again, if you need prayer, come forward. Don't forget, we got service on Sunday. It's going to be powerful. We're actually going to continue talking about how do we build healthy families and what that looks like. You don't want to miss Sunday. It's going to be super powerful.